Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my director spotlight on Hiroshi Teshigahara. Now Teshigahara was a Japanese director who was active from the 1950s through to the early 1990s. And I mentioned recently on my channel that Teshigahara made a number of documentaries in his career, which has limited to a certain extent his dramatic works to a fairly small handful when compared to other Japanese directors who were working in the same era. In addition, his documentaries are fairly difficult to acquire, so you have a limited pool of films to choose from when you're watching his stuff. So I eventually realized that a top five list is more appropriate in this case, because it's difficult to even find ten of this man's films outside of Japan. But with that said, you should not assume that Teshigahara is a lesser director because of the brevity of this list. All of these films are impressive, in my opinion, and I'm confident that Teshigahara would be more well-known to Western viewers if he had decided to make a higher number of dramatic works that were eventually you know, uh, distributed properly to the Western world. Now, I especially like his camera work in his films, and he tends to create films with very interesting and or unconventional premises. Uh, he's also the first person of Asian descent to be nominated for the Academy Award for Best Director. So let's get to the list. This is my personal top five Hiroshi Teshigahara films. My thoughts on each film will be very brief, primarily because this is a list video, not a review. And remember, titles for all the movies I discuss will be listed in the description box below. Number five. Rick Yu, 1989, this is a drama. Set in the turbulent Sengoku period of feudal Japan, an aging tea master teaches the way of tea to a headstrong shogun. The emphasis here is on the conflict between ambitious conquest and tranquility and simplicity. As expected from this director, there is excellent use of color in terms of clothing, sets, and natural environments. It's a, dis uh, a deliberately paced affair with a calming mood and very good soundtrack and camera work. It would, be, it would have been nice to see a tea ceremony from start to finish since only segments of the ceremonies are shown in the film, but Teshigahara himself is a grand master of the Sogetsu Ryo school of Ikeban, which is the Japanese art of flower arrangement. So his value for aesthetics comes through very nicely in this film. Number four. Pitfall, 1962. This is a dramatic thriller. Set against the background of labor relations in the Japanese mining industry, this film is about a mysterious man in white who confronts and manipulates the citizens of a rural town. The focus shifts between multiple protagonists who are directly or indirectly affected by this man's actions, and the storyline works like a mystery that slowly reveals the intentions and reasoning behind the various events that unfold. An unquestionably well-made movie with an impactful atmosphere and sound design. Number 3. Bizarra, The Princess Go, 1992. This is a drama. This film is a sequel of sorts to Rick Yu, and is similar in terms of deliberate pacing, sumptuous visuals, and overall themes. The juxtaposition of political power and artistic refinement is still present here, but this is more concerned with plot-driven conflict. There is also virtually no emphasis on tea ceremonies themselves, which is different from its predecessor. The young actress is a spunky girl who adds some flavor during the opening half. Direction is excellent as expected, with beautiful visuals of natural landscapes from start to finish. A nice companion piece to Rick you, and arguably more absorbing. Number 2. The Face of Another, 1966 drama. This film is about a man who was disfigured in an industrial accident that left his face covered in burns. He decides to get a new face from his doctor and then interacts with society while risking the possibility that his new face could actually change his behavior as a person. This is a psychological drama with some darker undertones and even some eerie background scoring at times. Much narration is used to express the psychological details, but it is executed well. As an added bonus, a bit of time is spent on a secondary character, a woman with a partially disfigured face. Cinematography and visuals are very nice, again as expected. This is a quality film with solid acting and some noteworthy makeup effects. 
And my favorite Hiroshi Teshigahara film is Woman in the Dunes, 1964. This is a drama. The story follows an entomologist school teacher who goes on an expedition to collect insects that inhabit sand dunes. He misses the last available ride for the day, so the villagers recommend that he stay at the house of a widow for the evening. The most obvious compliment to be made is with regards to the sandscapes, which are captured with fantastic camera work. The sand itself it does not merely act as a background environment in this film, but it exists as an omnipresent force that's both beautiful and dangerous. The characters are involving, the acting is very good, and the scenario is attention-grabbing. There's some symbolism to mine out of this as well, and our protagonist has a very pronounced character arc at the end of the film. Woman of the Dunes received two Academy Award nominations, Best Foreign Language Film and Best Director. It is a must-watch for anyone interested in classic Japanese film. So those were my favorite Teshigahara films. I hope this list can provide some recommendations for those who are unfamiliar with this director. And if you've seen some of his films, tell me some of your favorites in the comments section below. And as always, we will see you next time.